All right, welcome to our last video here for Chapter 7. We talked about sampling distributions in general. And then we talked about sample proportions. And in our last video here, we're exploring the idea of sample means. And we're going to talk about a lot of things that are similar as far as sample means compared to sample proportions. Uh, but there is at least a couple of uh, important differences as well. Now, first thing you want to understand is that we're saying sample means. So now we're talking about quantitative data as opposed to sample proportions, which deals with categorical data. Now, our objectives, we're going to find the mean and standard deviation for a sampling distribution of the sample mean, checking the 10% condition, so that part sounds the same. We're going to explain how the shape of the sampling distribution of the sample mean is affected by the shape of the population distribution and the sample size. And if we're allowed, because if we meet the conditions, then we're going to use the normal distribution to calculate probabilities involving sample means. But our check, as you'll see, is going to be a little bit different. Now, one thing that's not different, however, is that when you increase the sample size, your distribution is going to get closer and closer to a normal distribution. So looking at this example here, we see that when we have a small sample, our distribution is going to be skewed. But as we increase the sample size, we see that we are going to end up having a much more symmetrical distribution. Now, over here, we see that this is the shape of the, um, of the sample. Now, when we look at this sample here, we can find the mean using any kind of procedure we want. Clearly not symmetric, though. Clearly not going to be approximately normal. But if we were to take all possible sample means and put them together, we would see this distribution on the right. Now, what this says is that this is approximately normal. So that's the idea of the sampling distribution being approximately normal, even if the population itself isn't normal. Now, a couple things we want to take away from that. First of all, we know that the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar, mu sub x bar, is mu. It's an unbiased estimator. The standard deviation, we know if we increase the sample size, then the standard deviation gets smaller. And again, that's going to be shown right here. We see that the standard deviation of x bar is the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. Now, as long as the population is at least 10 times the sample size, as long as the 10% condition is met. So that's important for us to note there. Now, it says these facts are about the mean and standard deviation of x bar are true no matter what the shape of the population distribution has. In the previous slide, we saw that the population was not normally distributed. But we can still use these um, rules as long as we have the 10% condition met. Now, if we're sampling from a normal population, if we're sampling from a normal population, sample size doesn't matter at all. Your sampling distribution is going to be approximately normal. So you want to look for that phrase is approximately normal. And if you see that in the problem, you know your sampling distribution is approximately normal, and you're good. You don't have to worry about anything else. Um, again, as long as the 10% condition is met. Now, if it's not, if the population is not known to be normal, we can fall back on something called the central limit theorem. It says most population distributions are not normal. They're skewed one way or the other. If you're looking for the shape of that sampling distribution, well, as long as your sample size is large enough, then the sampling distribution will be approximately normal regardless of what the population looks like. Now you might be asking yourself how large is large enough. Generally speaking, we say that it has to be at least 30. So in the green box down at the bottom here, if you draw an SRS of size n from any population with mean mu and finite standard deviation sigma, the central limit theorem, or CLT as we'll call it, says that when n is large, again, at least 30, the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar is approximately normal. Now, if we look at this example here, this is an example looking at a population from Rice University sampling distribution alpha. We see here first, when the sample size is 2, we see a whole bunch of different values here, and it's clearly not normal. But if you increase the sample size to 5, it's already getting closer, more symmetric. Not quite perfect yet. And if you get to 10, even better. When you get up to 25, that is where we start to see this approximately normal shape. So as you increase your sample size, the distribution that is clearly not normal gets closer and closer to normal. 
again, what are we thinking about here? We're thinking about the sampling distribution, meaning all samples of the same size. That is what is ending up being approximately normal. Now, it says in the previous example illustrates, even when the population is very non-normal, sampling distribution of the sample often looks approximately normal. Now, they say with sample sizes as small as 25. Generally speaking, we're going to keep it to 30 because that's just the more traditional sense there because some distributions are really, really skewed. So we're going to be a little bit more conservative and stick to this 30 value here. All right. So the central limit theorem allows us to use normal probability calculations to answer questions about the sample means from many observations, even when the population is not normal. So when we talk about the sampling distribution of X bar, same idea. We take a sample, take a whole bunch of different samples. We're going to get different X bar, X bar values, but if you take the mean of the X bar, that's going to be mu, and the standard deviation of that sampling distribution is going to be sigma, which is the standard deviation of the population, divided by root n. So, some similarities, some differences with proportions. How to find the mean? Well, the mean is going to be the same. But to find the standard deviation, we have a different rule here. 10% conditions still hold. As far as the normality check for the shape, that's different here. With proportions, we looked at n times p had to be at least 10, and n times 1 minus p both had to be at least 10. Here, either the population is normal, or the central limit theorem can be applied to show you that you have a sample size large enough that you will, you will yield a uh, sampling distribution that is approximately normal as well. That's it. Lots of practice to come in class, and see you next time.